I've been carving decoys since about 1985. But you destroy one by cutting one out, it's bloody sharp. Got another one. Ready. Count your fingers. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Factory to Field. This week we're going to take you to Hopkins, Michigan. That's right, Mark. The home of the Ballard Institute for the Decoys of Arts and Sciences. Well, let's get right to the factory. We're going to join Master Carver Brian Ballard as he shows Paul how to hand make a duck decoy. So Mr. Ballard, the first step in making a hunting decoy is using a real decoy? Well, this isn't really a decoy, this is a study mount. And the reason okay. why we use these is it's a taxidermy mount, but we can see how the feathers go together, we can see how the feather groups work together, and how the overall body looks. We can tell the head position, the tail, the sides, and this is what we build our hunting blocks off of, okay. the real bird. My name's Brian Ballard, and I've been carving decoys since about 1985. Uh, I started making decoys just to hunt with, and it's the same reason I still make them today. So next step, we're going to draw it on cork and yep. cut it out on a bandsaw and get started. Yep, we're going to make our bodies out of high-density tan cork, and we're going to make our head out of basswood. You ready to give it a try? I'm ready. All right, I'll let's follow go. You. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Try not to hurt him. Okay, the first step is actually drawing what you've done here. Yep, we took two profiles on this block. Okay. We put the top profile, which is looking down at the decoy, yep. and the side profile, of course, the side view. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these views and we're gonna cut them out on the bandsaw. Don't you destroy one by cutting one out? You do, but there's a way that we do it, a technique that we don't slice all the way through okay. that allows our pattern to stay there until the very last moment when we're all done. Good. Ready to give it a try? Yep. Ready. Count your fingers. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead and shut her down. And there you are. You can just about hunt with that the way it is. Yeah, yeah that's actually not too bad. All right, so All now right. we're going to kind of rough start putting some shape into it. We'll put a couple lines on it. We'll let you start hacking away at it. <laughs> Maybe bring in some uh, some advisors from the Ballard from School the of Decoy uh, class Good. of 2010. I saw some of their decoys actually at a show. And that show was in Ohio, wasn't it? It sure was Westlake, Ohio. Westlake, Ohio. What's going on at Westlake? At Westlake, it's one of the biggest decoy shows in the nation. You'll have hunting block carvers. You'll have decorative carvers, miniature carvers, antique guys. Everything to do with waterfowling and waterfowling history that you could ever think of, you're going to see in Westlake, Ohio. Wow. Well, let's go there right now. And All see right, how let's go. All right. So Brian, we're here in Ohio. What's going on here? Well, what happens here is kind of the culmination of everything that we talked about before. This is where the kids come and get all sorts of creative ideas. They see waterfowling and decoy history from the time it started in the 1800s till now. Okay. They're taking everything they've seen and everything they've learned, and there's all sorts of different competitions here. Right now, they're working on a decoy painting competition, and what they're doing is they're painting their decoys in a traditional gunning style. No frills. Nothing excessive, just whatever the duck is going to see that's going to make them come in and land in the spread. 
you'll see everything from carving contests to painting contests. The decoys that they've worked on before, they're going to be thrown in a pool today and they're going to be judged just like they would out in the marsh or the pond. Um, they're judged from 20 yards away. So any frills and things like that disappears. Right. Plus, the decoys they make, they have to be tough enough to be tossed in the boat, tossed in a bag. Right. Somebody might even shoot one, who knows? They've <laughs> got to be tough decoys. Yeah. But what they're really doing is perpetuating the history of making decoys. And the majority of these kids, they'd rather be sitting here than sitting at home playing a video game or texting each other. Their fingers are just as busy doing this, but they're a lot more uh, beneficial with the paintbrush in their hand doing this kind of stuff. Well, good. Let's get back to the shop and finish showing me how the decoys are made. Yep, can't wait. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Factory to Field.